Because as I often said to people, today's headlines and history's judgment are rarely the same. And if you are going to govern wisely, you will focus not on today's headlines, but on the principles and the values that are sustaining principles and values for the right outcomes later on. I would suggest to you that those principles are just a few. First of all, to always believe that democracy is the only form of government that human beings can be served by and reach their full potential. I know there are some who say that these people or those people are not ready for democracy, but you know we used to say that about Latin Americans, we used to say that about Asians. We said it at one point about Africans, and frankly, in my town of Birmingham, they even said it about black people. You know, we were just kind of too childlike to care about those things like who might govern us. Well, who are we to say that any man, woman, or child should ever be condemned to live in tyranny? Now, we also have to be to affirm the value of allies and friends. You know, I have had to deal with lots and lots of countries in the world, and you can always make your way with any country in the world. You can find some common interests, unless they are pure adversaries, you can usually find some common interests. But it works a lot better when you've got common values. And the United States and Canada have common values. And as we have taken on the challenges post-September 11th in trying to extend the benefits of what we have to peoples far beyond our shores, I've watched those values tested. I've watched our populations tested. And I just want to say one thing to you as people of Canada. Thank you, thank you, thank you for what you have done in Afghanistan. I know. I know how hard it has been to see men and women cut down in the prime of their lives. Because every life is a mother or a daughter or a son or a father. Every life is special, not just to that family, but to that community. And those lives can never be recouped, never can come back. But we all know that nothing of value is ever achieved without sacrifice. Canada has sacrificed alongside the United States of America, and I, as the 66th Secretary of State, simply want to say thank you. <laughs> yes, we face a lot of challenges. But I'm a big believer that, in fact, we will find our way through them. But when you face challenges, you need to reaffirm your principles. But you need to do two other things. You need to make sure that you've got ideas, and you need to make sure that you've got the right people making decisions and willing to serve. And that is what a public policy school is all about. The value, though, of having someone and some place where people can think beyond the boundaries of what we know now to what we might know at another point in time and therefore be able to act in larger boundaries. That's the wonderful value of a school like this one in a great university. And why be in a university? Well, you can have ideas in a think tank. You can probably have ideas sitting someplace in your office alone. But I can guarantee you that those ideas will be more vivid, they will be bolder, and they will be better tested by the process that happens in a university of the great debate, the great research, the great debate again, the research again, and the debate again, the iterative process of research and thinking in a university where people can come from across the disciplines. Because you see, no public issue any longer comes in a single disciplinary package. It's not a political science problem, or an economic problem, or a problem of history, or a problem of or a problem of engineering. 
it is more likely a problem like how do we deal with climate change, in which all aspects from all disciplines have to come together to help us solve that problem. And so the energy in a school, within a university, to do that research and to have those debates and to broaden and deepen the basis from which policymakers can take ideas. That's the great thing about doing a public policy school in a great university, and I know that you will do that well. Now, I am a great believer in public service, as you might know. I believe it's honorable. I believe that people of great competence go into it. But I saw something else. People of great passion go into it as well. And much of what one must do to make great public service servants is to somehow help them to be passionate about what they do. And sometimes the work is hard, and sometimes it might even be a little bit tedious. But if people can be infused by their relationship with and their contact with other public servants, with the passion of wanting to change the world, because I guarantee you that's what drives people in public service. They want to change the world. If you can infuse that passion into them, and I think this school can do that, that is a great contribution to great public service. I wish you, in this great endeavor, success. I wish you, in this great endeavor, the kind of support that you are getting in this room, and especially I wish you the love of people like the Palmers to continue the, the great work that will be done here. I wish the teachers and to the administrators and to the students uh, great experiences in public policy as you interact with those who have been in and out and back and forth. But more than anything, I wish you passion about what public service means for great democracies and what it will mean for Alberta, for Canada, and for the world. Thank you very much.